In this problem, we're at being asked to determine the time required for a car to travel one kilometer along the road. It starts from rest, it reaches some maximum speed, and the driver then applies the brakes, and the car decelerates at two meters per second squared until it comes to a stop. While the car is accelerating, it has a, a constant acceleration of one and a half meters per second squared. When I first encounter a problem like this, I like to make a graph or think about the kinematics of the situation. So let's make a graph of the velocity of the car or its speed as a function of time. And since we know the acceleration is a constant, I can write down my velocity. Here's the velocity at some given time is equal to the initial velocity plus some constant acceleration. I'll call it AC times time. So what this means is that the velocity, it starts at zero, and then as, as a function of time, it grows linearly because the, const, the acceleration is a constant. So the car accelerating is a function of time. And then the driver hits the brakes, and it, the acceleration, the deceleration, the velocity slows down as a function of time. And one thing to note is that the slope on the right, this slope is a more, it's a steeper downward slope than the sl slope on the left. And that's because the car decelerates more rapidly than it accelerates. Or I could show this mathematically by finding dv dt is simply equal to this constant acceleration. So a bigger value of acceleration means the line is steeper. And in this case, the deceleration, a sub c, is a negative quantity. It's a large negative quantity, meaning a large negative slope. So there's two parts of this problem, the forward acceleration and the braking. Let's get rid of this subscript a sub c, and I'll refer to that as the forward acceleration. So a, in this case, is equal to 1.5 meters per second squared. And we use the subscript a sub b for braking, and a sub b is equal to 2 meters per second squared. And actually, let me throw a negative sign in there because the acceleration is in the negative direction. And another handy thing to do is to draw my position or my coordinate axis. And in, in, uh, in this book, we use the variable s to denote the position of the car as a function of time. And we're going to say the car moves from left to right and the positive direction is to the right. And we'll start out, the car starts out at a position 0. And let's say we're going to divide this into two different segments. I'll call this segment a and segment b. And the car will travel a distance, we'll call this s sub a, and this distance s sub b. So here's the distance that it's accelerating s sub a and s sub b is the distance it requires for the needed for the car to break. And one thing we know is that the total distance, the distance required to accelerate plus the distance required to break is equal, we'll call this some total distance s and we know that's equal to one kilometer or 1,000 meters. We don't really know much about this problem outside of the distance the car traveled and the two accelerations. So we know the distance of 1,000 meters and these two accelerations. So we don't even know what this distance SA is. We don't know the velocity of the car at that point and we don't know how long it took to get to this maximum acceleration. But let's write down some of the relationships that we do know. We do know, for example, that the velocity at A squared is equal to the velocity, its initial velocity, which in this case will be zero, but V naught squared, plus two times the acceleration of the car times this distance SA minus the initial distance or the initial position, which will also be zero. So if I cross off terms and simplify, V naught is gone, S naught, both of those terms are equal to zero. I can also write something similar for VB. The velocity, we'll say that location B is uh, at this, the end of period B. So I can say the velocity at B squared is equal to the velocity at A squared plus 2 times the acceleration of braking. Remember, that's negative 2 meters per second squared. Multiplied by S, the final distance, minus SA, the distance at which the brakes were first applied. Now the velocity at the end of period B is equal to zero, so VB is equal to zero, and AB we know it's given to us, S we know is a thousand meters, and we also know A, the acceleration of the car. So what I'll do is make a substitution, we have a couple of equations to work with, and once I make that substitution you'll note the only thing that I don't know is S sub A. So I, the only thing I don't know with these two equations is the distance uh, under which the car was accelerating in the forward direction. And this is what I come up with when I work through the algebra solving for uh, SA. And then plugging in numbers and being careful of my signs for AB, it's a negative 2 meters because it's in the opposite direction, the negative direction. What I come up with plugging in these numbers is I double check my units and I've got in the numerator I have meters squared per second squared and in the denominator both terms are meters per second squared. 
So everything cancels out except for meters, so my units check out. And what I come up with is a distance of 571 meters. And this is the distance uh, under which the car is accelerating in the forward direction. And ultimately what we're trying to find is the time required for all of this to happen, the time required to accelerate and the time required to brake. So let's find the time that the car is required to accelerate. So here's my kinematic equation. Let's say SA is equal to S0, the initial position, which is 0, plus the initial velocity, which is also 0, times time, plus 1 half AT squared. And let's say this is TA, the time elapsed over that first period of acceleration. The initial position is 0, the initial velocity is 0, A we know, and SA we know is 571 meters, so I can solve now for TA, the time required to accelerate. So plugging in units for this, what I'll come up with is the meters will cancel, and I'll end up with second squared, and I'm picking the square root of second squared, and I'll come up with a time, this is the time required for the car to accelerate, is 27.59 seconds. And now we need to know the time it requires the car to, to uh, come to a complete stop. So we could use the, kinema the uh, kinematic relationship VB now, the velocity when the car is stopped, that'll actually be zero, is equal to VA, the maximum velocity of the car, plus the acceleration during braking, which we know will be a negative number, times the time required to brake over that period B. So now setting VB equal to zero and solving for TB, we'll come up with TB is equal to negative VA over AB. And remember this AB is negative, so we will get a positive quantity for TB. And now VA, the maximum velocity of the car, is simply equal to the acceleration of the car times the time that it was accelerating. And we'll include this AB again to round it out. So this is, so now we know everything. We know A, uh, the acceleration, the forward acceleration, the reverse acceleration of the car, and TA. So if I move that over a bit, plug in numbers, uh, my negative signs cancel, uh, meters per second squared cancel, my units are good, and I'll come up with the time it required the car to brake, and I calculate a value of 20.7 seconds. So then the total time for the car to do this maneuver is equal to the time it requires the car to accelerate, plus the time it requires the car to slow back down to zero, and that means it's, we've got, if I plug in numbers, I come up with a value of 48.3 seconds.